The film premiered last night, I think, to great fanfare. It's a beautiful story. I, I think it's a really universal story of um, desire and mistakes in humanity, but it's amazingly 90s. <laughs> Uh, thus the reference to landline. Can I just, j let's just jump in and tell me why that period, what about it spoke to you, and how did you yeah. manage to, like, everything, I feel like in film schools, like, continuity classes will be taught about the things you found and put into this movie that I'm sure don't even exist anymore. That's so sweet, yeah. Uh, we had to get Zima from eBay, and it was delivered green, so we had to dump it out and put water in it, but we have a little Zima shot in it tastefully though we didn't want to you know ride too hard on the nostalgia right. and make <laughs> people sla you know you slap bracelets and like you know do kid and play moves it, it you know we wanted it to be if you took the 90s out of the story it would still be a really nice and <laughs> thoughtful and full story uh but we used it we said it in the 90s because we didn't want to have to rely on facebook and instagram as a device to tell a story about kids and people cheating even like the, that listening tower at the record store where you hit the button and it plays 30 seconds, it made me feel so old. Like, <laughs> but it, there's something really that sweet That record about store it. closed two days after we <laughs> shot. <laughs> yeah. Wow, signs of the times. Um, Ken, Jenny and Abby, you're so, you guys are so wonderful um, and your chemistry as sisters. Um, not always the best of friends, uh, I would say, <laughs> that grow closer. Do you either of you have siblings? And, and did you, Gillian, did you work with them at all in the dynamic? Like, did you put them on like a roller coaster or send them for a massage <laughs> together? <laughs> I should have. We I'm both have sisters. We both have siblings. We both have sisters. Abby has well I'll let Ab I'll let Abby talk about her own self but um, I do think I've said this before but what's kind of interesting is that we have very positive I would say generally it seems relationships with our siblings and um, it was kind of hard to yell at each other yeah I because you know what a love um, but the script really really tells you what to do it's and it's fun to be kind of like rough and playful just in sex personally and then with work <laughs> i don't like it but in in sex um Hobbies. i think that's great work, yeah. and uh, i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> sorry should, i'm trying to take this really seriously I'm, I'm so glad uh i should mention that the two of you worked together to, to quite a bit of success before with obvious child which was such an amazing i mean if an abortion movie could ever be just so goddamn enjoyable <laughs> it was that one um uh so uh, so abby sort of walking into this i, I feel like your character um has a lot on her back uh, chip on her shoulder, um, and the two of you just sort of discover that your parents are cheating, um, or one of your parents is having an affair, while at the same time, um, Jenny, your character's in a relationship with Mr. Duplass back there, and you oh. sort of have a straying, <laughs> sort of stray all on your own. Um, I guess, is that like difficult to deal with? I mean, I think we all, it touches like adultery and, and lying and relationships and trust touch all of us. Like, how is that to sort of deal with on screen? It feels heartbreaking. It's it's really hard. Um, it's hard to play somebody who wants to be free and has convinced herself that she's not allowed to ask um, questions of herself and her partner. And I think that's a very relatable situation. And when I watch those moments, it's not actually the moments that are um, the, the moments where she's being duplicitous or lying or cheating. It's the moments where they connect and they have that that sweet thing that you have when you're really in love, when they're taking a shower together and being playful, that those things could be lost or corrupted is really, really heartbreaking. And um, Jay is such a lovely person to perform with, and I felt very connected to him immediately, even though we didn't really know each other before this. And um, the feeling that you could lost, lose those simple pleasures is, um, is tough, and it's tough to watch, and I think it's tough to perform. And Jay, you had a point, uh, well, your character has a point that um, you know, confession is really just about freeing yourself from guilt. It does nothing to sort of take the strain off a relationship when you admit that you're cheating. Do you sort of feel the same way in your life, or how do you feel about, like, should do, is it better to come clean, shut your mouth if your relationship can go on in a perfect way? <laughs> love line, love uh, line, tell you know, us. I, I, I lie, lie, lie. lie. And thinking there's a lot of truth there. I mean, it, you know, the confession is really not, um, that's not where, that's not the indiscretion, essentially, is, you know, that's, that's where you basically trying to unload the burden from yourself. And I think there's a, there's a lot of, you know, great stuff that this movie brings up in terms of, um, I, you know, I, I always feel that it's just really hard to, to, like, be a good person. You know, the challenge between, like, trying to be yourself and find out who you are and, and be true to yourself and then also be a good dad or sister or husband or whatever it is that you're trying to be that is an incredibly tall order, and I think this movie examines that in such with such um, care 
and accuracy and, and humor. Abby, you're the one who has to, uh, your character has to sort of hold everyone culpable yeah. through all of her teenage ang angst and also sort of define your own like the sense of morality. I mean, yeah. that's n no pressure. I think Ali, she does, she's very independent and she does like to take things into her own hands. But um, yeah, I think she's heartbroken when her family breaks up, but it brings everyone kind of closer together in their own way after living separately for so long. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I think she's heartbroken, but it also is a chance for her to break out of this pattern that she has of just shutting off to people. We should mention Edie Falco and John Turturro were amazing parts of this movie as, as your parents. Um, and I don't know, I, seeing Edie Falco with like a sculpted nail hold a cordless phone took me so back to Carmela Soprano that I almost yeah. cried. I'm like, why does this just feel right about the world? So if you wanted to say real quickly just about getting them involved and agree. Yeah, yeah, it was a dream. I sent them the script and they read it and they liked it and they signed on and I was she's shocked. She's very picky, Edie, especially. I, I don't think hear she's that. I was very <laughs> flattered and nervous. And um, John and Edie have known each other for many, many years, and yet they've never worked together, and they've never played a married couple, and putting them together in a room to be a couple, you know, you could really see the love that this couple has had, and I think it was because of their deep friendship, um, but it also was very intimidating to have them, you know, have sex <laughs> <laughs> on a couch, um, but they're so wonderful to work with. Uh, I saw such beautiful performances in Edie, n and not even while we were shooting. It was in editing. I, I just, all these nuances, she's amazing, and John is hilarious and kind and funny and a real giving pro of an actor.